invited. Thanks for coming along today. Yeah, no trouble. You've been asked to come because you've been told that you need to learn more about your pelvic floor. Uh, and hopefully I'm going to help you with that today. The pelvic floor is a series of muscles that live underneath our body. From our sacrum at the back through to our pubic symphysis at the front. This is a diagram of our pelvis here. And the muscles come underneath us a little bit like a hammock from front to back. They've got a couple of holes in them that allow the passage of faeces and urine out of them. And the stronger our muscles, the more able we are to stay continent. And, the, and it should assist with performing a more solid base so that we can attain a, a better erection. Yeah. Now, the things that we need to know about the pelvic floor, other than the anatomy, is how best to recruit the muscles. How do we actually learn how to turn the muscles on and get the most out of our exercises? And that's certainly something that we'll go through today. What you'll go away with is an exercise program that you can do at home that you'll be able to practice the pelvic floor exercises either before the operation or, and after as well. Um, and you'll also have a really good sense of, of how to really effectively know that you're doing the exercises properly. We'll draw a few pictures as well just to make sure that you really understand the fundamentals of why we're doing this. Um, but like I say, at the end of it you'll feel like you're in a much better place and, and know so much more about the pelvic floor than you already did. So we're going to look at things in a little bit more detail right now and I'm going to draw a few pictures to hopefully illustrate things a little bit better. Our urinary system starts with two kidneys and that feeds into a big holding bay called our bladder. At the base of the bladder there's a prostate and that's a little gland um, that pretty soon is going to be removed. Cutting through the middle of that is your urethra and then the pelvic floor is a sling of muscles that sits at the very base of this structure. So the kidneys are constantly filtering urine and feeding it into this bladder. Once the prostate's been removed, this area around the base of the bladder here can become a little less able uh, to effectively seal the hole, uh, which can tend to make things a bit leaky at the other end. Thankfully though, we've got this layer of muscle here called the pelvic floor, and that forms another sphincter. Um, and this, if we can strengthen this muscle and make it a lot tighter around here, uh, we can help to keep the urine inside us. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, yeah. So what I need you to remember is the word strength. Strength is an important component of what we're aiming to improve uh, doing these pelvic floor exercises. There's also another way of looking at it as well, is that this is part of a much bigger picture. And if we put our pelvis in the picture here, and our spine, and our rib cage, that gives us some sense of where things actually are in the whole body. Yep. What we can see from this picture is that this structure would actually fall over forwards. There's nothing in the front here to help to keep it upright. So our body sticks a muscle around us, kind of like a girdle, and that muscle pulls in and pushes against the spine here, and that gives us some degree of stability. But if I got my arm and, I, and my arm was falling forwards, if I pushed a balloon against my arm to stabilise it, the balloon would bubble out of the top and bubble out of the bottom. So we need to make sure that the diaphragm at the top and the pelvic floor from underneath form all of the sides of this cylinder, and these are called our core muscles. It is to produce a long, slow, gentle contraction, but right the way through the day. So therefore, it needs a lot of endurance. And that's the second word I want you to focus on, endurance. Very different to strength. And how we train for endurance is very different from how we train for strength. We don't train a marathon runner like we train a sprinter. So we need to leave you today with two distinct exercise programs. One that functions on endurance and one that functions on strength. Yep. Does that make sense? It does, yes. Good. So those two words that we had to remember, one was strength, the other one was endurance. You remember those two words? Yep. These are the two programs that we're going to leave you with today. However, both of these programs depend very heavily on the right technique. Yep. It doesn't matter how long you spend at the gym to get big muscles. If you have bad technique, 
It doesn't how much time you spend trying to do the endurance exercises or how much time you try doing, trying to do the strength exercises. If the technique is poor, the outcome will be poor. And this is what we're going to focus on today, to make sure that your technique is as good as it possibly can be. So what we're going to look at today is how do we know that we're getting the best possible technique. And that's what we're going to look at with the real-time ultrasound in a minute. So now we've got you on the table, okay, and we're ultrasounding your bladder, um, which is just present on the screen at the moment. What we're going to teach you to do is to get the technique perfect today. And it's really important when we're practicing technique that you don't try too hard, okay? If you imagine that you're playing golf and you swing really hard at a ball, the odds of you hitting the ball really well are pretty low. But if you slow yourself down and focus on the actual technique, then you should be able to get a pretty good, nice swing action happening. And that's really what we're looking at right now. It's just a very gentle sense of recruitment. So now you're laying in this position and the pelvic floor is actually now a pelvic wall. It's actually sitting more in this position here. What I want you to focus on is there's almost three parts to the pelvic floor. We can divide it into the back section, which is where your anus is. That little patch of skin between your testicles and your anus, which is that perineal zone, we'll call that the middle zone. Yep. And then the testicles and the penis at the front, and we'll call that the front bit. Okay? So we've got the back, the middle, and the front. Now, I'm going to get you to focus just on the back at the moment. And I want you to imagine that you're stopping yourself from breaking wind. Okay? So you just very gently imagine that you're, um, or even when you're on the toilet and um, your uh, poo is moving down the tube, you're trying to suck it back up again. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. So very, very gently, I just want you to try and just suck it up and just lift and then let go. Great work, good. And what we see on the screen is that as you lift, we can see the pelvic floor lift at the same time and that's perfect, that's really good. One of the biggest mistakes that I tend to see people make is a big strain effort, a bear down, okay? And we didn't feel that with you today, which is good. But certainly if you feel like you're making a sudden quick turn on, uh, it's probably the wrong technique. Yep. So very gently again, just work on lifting from your back passage, that's good, and hold, and then let go again, and relax, and good, and again when we let go we see the pelvic floor drop back down again. Yep. This time what I want you to do is to work on your breathing pattern as well, and what I've noticed is that as you do that, you really stop breathing, yep. and it's kind of like you can remember to do one thing, but you forget to do something else. And it's kind of like rubbing your head and patting your tummy at the same time. You've just got to learn that technique. Yep. So this time we're going to try and take three normal breaths. So just from the back passage, draw up from the back passage. That's good. Breathe. One breath. Two breaths. Keep it up there. Good. Even breaths. Three breaths. Keep it up there. Good. And then let go. And relax. That's great, that's good, well done. Now we're gonna move slightly around the corner. We're gonna think about that middle section. And you know that sensation is when you walk into cold water and you, you kinda of don't want your bits to kind of go into that cold water, yeah? Yeah, yeah? Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine that you're drawing them straight up towards the top of your head, almost a vertical lift, or in this position, a horizontal lift. So just have a go at that for me, just from that middle bit, good. And then let go, brilliant. And the same rules apply. We're going to look at trying to work on making sure you don't strain and bear down, but that you can take three breaths. So have a go at a, a clearly defined lift. So what I'm going to get you to do is just to contract. That's good, or good lift. One breath. Two breaths. And three breaths. And then let go. Great work. Now again around the corner to the front, and this one's the easiest one. This is imagine that you're stopping yourself from urinating in midstream. Okay, and if you can't do it right now, that's okay. Just have a practice every now and again when you are going to the toilet. Just practice just stopping yourself and getting the feel of where that's coming from. And then you can practice it in this position. So have another go for me now from the front. Just draw in and lift. Take three breaths. There's one breath. Two breaths. Keep it sustained, three breaths, and then drop it down and relax. Great work. 
and now we're going to try all three from three breaths okay so don't try any harder but just try from the back the middle and the front all together so lift there's one breath two breaths good three breaths and again relax and let go great work good remember during all of those to make sure that your legs stay nice and relaxed and it's fine if you want to stick pillows underneath there or put your feet up on the sofa or do whatever you have to do but just make sure that your legs stay nice and relaxed at the same time so just to recap the back the middle the front and then all three together all distinctly different kinds of feels for the same contraction and that will help us to learn the best technique possible because we're looking at it from lots of different angles that was great work, well done. Today I'm going to give you a DVD to go away with that pretty much covers everything that we've done today. On the very back of that DVD, there are also some other functional exercises that you can do. Now functional exercises involve normal everyday activities, going up and down stairs, um, jumping up and down, those kind of normal activities um, which you can incorporate into everyday life. Um, they'll be at the back of the DVD so just have a look through those and do whichever ones you feel that you need to do. The important thing with those activities after the operation is that you only undertake them if you feel that you're, they're encouraging you to stay dry. If you do the exercises and you feel that you're just wetting the pad through it means that you're not quite ready for those exercises at this stage in time. Just wait, be patient, keep practicing the basic exercises that we've gone through today and what you should find is that as you ramp it up you should find that you stay dry during those exercises and that's really what we want to encourage going forward. So hopefully now you should have a very much a better sense of awareness of where your pelvic floor is how to contract it effectively without cheating. And that's really what I want you to go away with today, feeling. If you don't feel that way, my door's always open, you can come back and learn it. But get the technique right first of all before you build anything on top of it. Remember that diagram that we drew with technique as the foundation stones of this, of this glass. And if you don't have that stem of the glass, the glass itself is pretty useless. Um, down the track we can look at functional exercises of how to in, interact with normal exercises of everyday life um, and, and I'm sure we'll go through those when the time's right down the track but for now what's really important is that you're really happy with the quality of contraction that you've achieved.